Okay, so in this video, you will learn what are the limitations of Japanese candlestick, right? So first and foremost, understand that this is not the holy grail. There is no holy grail in trading, okay? So Japanese candlestick is just a technique for you or rather a tool that you can use in your trading to help you make better trading decisions. And that's about it, right? It's not a holy grail. It is not a, a trading system by and, it's, by and itself, okay? So with that said, I want to share with you three limitations of candlestick chart. Number one, it doesn't tell you how the price move. Number two, it doesn't tell you the big picture. And number three is get. All right, so let me explain what I mean. So how the price move. So let's say, for example, you have a candlestick chart that looks like this, right? Let's say it's a bullish one, okay? A bullish candlestick chart. It opens here and it closes here. And maybe this is the high and low for, let's say, this is a daily chart, high and low for the day, right? The thing about this candlestick chart is that it doesn't tell you how the price move within the day. For example, if this open here, the price could move like this, right? And say, for example, eventually close here, okay? Uh, maybe the price could move in this manner. It moves up, move down, moves up, and consolidates and close somewhere here. Or maybe it uh, moves open, go down lower, goes up, down, range, and then push back all the way up and close somewhere here. So you can see that based on this uh, few examples, there are different ways the price could have moved. And the candlestick pattern will not tell you that. So I've got a graphical representation, which is this, right? You can see that there are three, this is uh, three different, different ways that I have come up with on how the price could potentially move. Of course, you, there are more than three ways. It, there is, you know, countless possibilities. But the key thing that I'm trying to bring across is that you won't know how the price move just by looking at this candle itself. And there are significance to it because let's say, you know, the price just comes up and goes all the way up and closes here. There's, and, you know, there's a good chance that if it come into this area of resistance, it could just, you know, smash back lower in the opposite direction, right? Compared to, let's say, compared to, let's say, an, a move that comes up, starts to consolidate, right? There's a good chance that it could break up from this uh, this consolidation over here. So there are implications to this, right? And you, you basically can't tell what is it because the candlestick doesn't tell you how the price moves. So this is the first limitation that I want you to be aware of. The second thing is the big picture. So here's the thing, right? A lot of times, traders, they, they look at candlestick patterns, like maybe the shooting star, uh, bullish hammer, and stuff like that. But looking at this pattern itself, this individual pattern, it does not tell you the big picture. And if you're not careful, and if you just trade these patterns in isolation, it can be disastrous. So let's say, for example, this chart over here, you have a, you know, most traders would classify this as a, a shooting star. Right, it's a bearish uh, candlestick pattern because you have a very long wick and the, the price just closed marginally higher. So the thing is, if you look at this and you just go short because you think it's a bearish pattern, then you know, you're going to be in for some trouble because you, know, you always have to take into consideration what is the prevailing trend, what is the long-term trend. Right? And this is something that no candlestick patterns will tell you. It will tell you what has happened momentarily at this point in time, but it doesn't tell you, you know, what is the long-term trend, you know, where is support resistance and stuff like that. So bear this in mind that, you know, candlestick pattern just tells you what happened momentarily at this particular point in time. It does not tell you, you know, anything more else outside of that. So with that said, that is the second limitation, the big picture. And the third thing is gap. So traditionally, candlestick patterns, right, some of them comes with a, a gap, like for example, uh, engulfing pattern, right? The, the, the pattern has to, you know, gap. It has to gap the gap above or below the prior candle, right? If you don't understand, don't worry, right? We will cover that later. But basically, just understand that traditionally candlestick pattern it comes with gap. So if you're trading markets like the forex market, which is open twenty four five, you have to take into consideration of it. So for example, uh, textbook bearish engulfing looks something like this, where the market opens, it gaps open the previous candle, and then close lower, okay, covering the entire body of the previous candle. But as, I, as I've said, right, in the Forex market, you hardly have gaps because it's open, you know, almost 24 hours a day. So what happened is that you have to remove this gap portion. You have to, you know, remove it, right, and slightly tweak the definition of bearish engulfing for the Forex market. So what you should do instead is to, is to remove the gap element. So for a Forex bearish engulfing, it would pretty much open where the previous candle has closed, right, and then it just closed lower, engulfing the 
previous candle. So this gap element you need to take into consideration when you're trading the Forex markets or any markets there that is you know open for almost 24 hours a day. Okay, so with that, let's do a quick recap into the limitations of candlestick pattern. Number one, it doesn't tell you how the price moves, right? It just tells you tells you that it either close higher or lower. But in between from the open to the close, right, you do not know how the price moves within the day or within the period that you're looking at. Second thing, right, it doesn't tell you what's the long-term trend. So you have to be careful if you see, you know, things like a bullish hammer, right? A bullish hammer within a downtrend is not a bullish sign. Okay, so you want to be careful, you know, and be careful of just trading these patterns in isolation without taking into context what is the long-term trend. And last but not least, you need to modify patterns that involve a gap, especially if you're trading, you know, 24 hours market like the FX market and even some of the futures market. So take note of it that this gap portion of it needs to be removed so you can actually apply it to these other markets. So with that said, I have come to the end of this video and I'll see you in the next.